Hi, I'm Quentin, and I'm here late at night in my rather messy office, and one of the reasons it's messy is people will keep sending me this paper stuff. And I've been trying to develop a bit of a paperless workflow to get more of this into the electronic world. Um, I have a big filing cabinet over there, but I'd much rather have it all tucked away on my computer where I can search for it, I can read it on my iPad when I'm away from base, and so forth. Um, so I developed a few scripts to help me with this, and I thought I'd do a little video just to, to share them in case they're useful to it. The ideas are useful to anyone else. Um, quite a lot of the ideas here come from David Sparks's excellent uh, iBook called Paperless, which is available on the iPad. If you're in the Apple world, I recommend that. There's some interesting ideas there. So let's see what happens in my system. I've got a bit of paper. This is something to do with tax, um, which I'm going to just drop into my scanner here. Hit the scan button. And these uh, Fujitsu scan snaps are wonderful scanners. They basically take bits of paper and turn them into PDFs uh, with the image of the, of the document in there. Um, they are a little more expensive than most scanners, but definitely worthwhile. I strongly recommend them. But the question then is, once you've got that PDF, what do you do with it? Well, let's see what happens on my screen here. I have my software set up so that when I drop something in the scanner, it just appears as a timestamped file in a particular folder on the disk. It doesn't do anything else automatically in the software. Um, as it happens, this folder is also on Dropbox. You can see there's a little Dropbox icon here. So everything I do this with is automatically synced to the cloud and is also available on all of my other devices. Now, there are, there's a three-step process I want to go through here, and I'll explain it to you and then show you how we automate it. There's my actual file. And I want to give that a name that's meaningful for me, but also can be helpful in the automatic filing process later. So there's a process of looking at the document, just checking it scanned OK, and then renaming it. Once I've done that, I transfer it from this scan inbox folder to another folder called OCR before action. OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition, and it's the process of taking the image of a document and recognizing the text and then embedding that recognized text back in the document. And what this means is that firstly you can copy and paste stuff, for example, from that document if you want to, but much more importantly for me, it makes it searchable using the Spotlight facilities built into the Mac. And so I can find this document later by searching for words that were actually in the printed text. So documents that are in this folder, I run through an OCR process and when they've been recognized, they get moved into the Action folder, which is where we're going to make decisions about where they should finally be filed. I could do all of this as one monolithic process, but I like breaking it down into these three separate folders, because not every document is going to need all of these. For example, if you have a document that um, comes from, say, you're using print to PDF, there's no need to do OCR on that. It already has the text embedded in it, so you can skip the OCR stage. For now, I'll delete this file and we can start again from stage one. Now, there are various ways we could automate this process. We could use some kind of keystroke macros. We could maybe use folder actions but I'm going to use a utility called Hazel. Now, Hazel is only available on the Mac, though I believe there are clones now available on Windows. And what it does is it lets you set up for particular folders some rules that will be applied to files that appear or change in that folder. So you can see on my scan inbox folder here, I've set up a rule called rename and move to OCR. All of these rules for these folders are paused at the moment, by the way, just so I can demonstrate them to you without them happening automatically in the background. So let's take a look at that rule. And basically this says, if the date last modified of the file in there is after the date last matched, i.e. Um, this has changed since Hazel last looked at it, then open it with an application called prompt to rename PDF. That's a little application I created um, using Automator. Uh, so let's put Hazel away for the moment and I'll show you that. So 
So here's the automator script and it gets the file from Hazel that it needs to work on. And the first thing I want to do is start giving it a name in the format that I like. So I like my files to start with uh, today's date or the date for which that particular document is relevant um, in a format like this, 2013-03-03, uh, that's year, month, day. And uh, he, uh, Automator has a rule to do that for you. Um, you can add the date or time to the file name uh, automatically. This is the date created in a particular format with a space uh, using leading zeros. And so that'll do the first stage of getting my file name into the format I want. And I'm going to, I'm going to want to interact with these files later. So I'm going to then set the, the output of this is, is the file with its new name. And I'm going to set a variable to point to that called the file, imaginatively named. Then I want to preview the file so that I can see that my document has scanned OK. I can remind myself of what's in it. And it also means I can see, for example, if it's a letter with a date, I'm actually going to name the file eventually uh, with the date of the letter, not the date I happen to scan it. Then I'm going to set a variable called file base name. Now this is almost like the file. This is the name of the file. But what I want to do is strip out some of the bits that um, that are in a file name. And so I run this little shell script um, here, which runs the base name utility. What that does is it takes a big long file name, which is likely to be something like users, your name, um, uh, Dropbox, scan in box, uh, xyz.pdf, and it gives you back xyz. So file base name is kind of, for me, the important bit of the file. In this case, it's going to have the date on the beginning already, so it's going to be 2013-03-03-xyz. Uh, and I store that in file base name. Why do I do that? Well, the next thing, almost the next thing, I'll come back to this, almost the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for um, a new file name for this file. I want to prompt the user and say, what would you actually like to call this? And so I'm asking for a new file name and I'm putting in as the default value that base name there. So it will give you the file name as it currently stands, stripped of all awkward things like extensions and path names, uh, and then let you just edit that if you want to. This little bit of Apple script here is very simple. And uh, it's it simply, um, it tells this application that I'm current that I will be running the prompt to rename PDF to activate that means to come to the front because we've just popped up preview and I want to make sure that when I come to ask the user for this file name that that window is at the front and that window has the focus so you don't need to do any clicking um, it should be there ready for you to just type so a little bit of Apple script just to make it come to the front um, the output of asking the user for a new file name is another variable called new name. So what do we then do? Well, we basically, another little bit of Apple script here, which I'll come back to. Um, we go back to getting the original files that we first stored up here. Remember, we once we'd renamed it, we saved what the file name was as um, the value of a variable. We're going to get that back again and um, ask automator to rename a single item so it's basically saying change the base name of this file to my new name uh, new name is the thing we've asked the user for so by this point um, we've stuck the date on the front to give you something to work with we've previewed the file we've asked the user what they want to call the file now uh, we've then gone back and we've renamed um, everything except the path and the extension of that file to the new name that the user has entered. And then finally, we're going to move the fi those files to the OCR before action folder um, once they've all been done. The one little bit I didn't cover is this run Apple script, another little bit of Apple script in here. And this is actually uh, looks annoyingly complex and does a very, very simple thing. This is a bit of Apple script which tells the preview window to close. Again, just to save me one more keystroke, um, I don't want to, having popped up the preview window so I can see what the document looks like, it would be nice if it closed of its own accord once I've picked a file name. And so this basically tells the application preview using system events to select file, 
close window. Uh, but it's a rather long-winded way of doing that. I don't think there's a neater way of doing that in Automator. Um, so that's relatively unimportant, but it does save me a mouse click. So that's the prompt to rename PDF application. And uh, let's see it in action. OK, I'm going to bring Hazel back again, and I'm going to unpause the rules on that particular folder. So hopefully things appearing now in the scan inbox should have this rule applied automatically. And let's see, I drop my bit of paper back into the scanner. The file gets saved in scan inbox. Uh, synchronizes with Dropbox, Hazel recognizes it's there, it runs my application which is prompting me for my new file name. Notice I haven't yet typed a keystroke or clicked a mouse for any of this to happen. It's got today's date at the start of the file and normally that would be all right but actu uh, actually I want to give this a name of the date of the file itself which is February the 22nd. And then I give it the rest of the file name. Now in my case um, I like these files to have uh, some meaningful keywords in them so it's going to say tax uh, payment changes. Click OK and you'll see the file has been renamed, the preview window has closed and it's now sitting in the OCR before action folder ready for the next stage to happen. So let me quickly show you the next couple of stages here. In the OCR Before Action folder we have a similar Hazel rule in which Hazel runs a bit of Apple script on the file and then moves it to the Action folder and that Apple script is going to cause a program to OCR the file and it's a fairly short script in this case so I've just embedded it in the Hazel rule. Now I'm using the utility called PDF Pen. If you have a more recent scanner it may actually come with decent OCR software included and you may be able to do this stage rather differently. You may have done it in fact earlier as part of the scanning process. But I like PDF Pen because um, I can script it using Apple Script. So this says open the file, essentially do the OCR and then close with saving. So it all happens pretty much in the background um, without me having to do anything. And then once that's done, it'll be moved to the folder action. Okay, what happens when it gets to the folder action? Um, then I have a whole load of rules here that do all sorts of different stuff to move my various documents into various places. Essentially, I think of this as the outbox where stuff goes before I put it in the filing cabinet. So move out tax stuff just basically says if the name matches year, month, day, space, tax, space, anything else, then move to a folder elsewhere in my filing system called tax. So that's all that needs to do. Okay, what I'm going to do now is show you all of this in action. So I'm going to delete that for the moment. I'm going to unpause these rules so that we're back in the normal situation that I have this in uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I can hide Hazel now and let's once more scan this document. So I drop it in the scanner. The scanner will save it in the scan inbox my first set of rules will pick that up and prompt me to rename it. I give it the name I want, which is 22, uh, two, I do that all the time, tax uh, change notification. I click OK, the window closes, it gets moved to there. PDF pen fires up and performs optical character recognition on that page. This can take a little bit longer, but it just happens in the background ping to tell me it's completed. That then gets moved into the action folder where the action rules notice that it begins with the word tax and file it away in another part of my filing system. Now I know from looking at the document that it contains the phrase pay an employee. So I'm just going to use spotlight here. I'm going to type that and one of the things that comes up sure enough should be, there you go, 2013 tax change notification which is filed away somewhere deep in my file system but I can still find using Spotlight automatically. So what I think is wonderful about this system, for me at least, is it's a bit like having a secretary, which I don't have sadly, but it's like taking this 
dropping it into my out tray and having someone basically file it away in the right place in my filing cabinet for me. Except I don't need a filing cabinet anymore.